Um, so just kind of from the perspective of the uh, South Carolina um, college student, you know, mired in debt and student loans and, you know, with a job market that's, you know, uncertain at best, how does having you in the White House help them going forward? Look at what I did as governor. Don't listen to what I say. Look at my record as governor. We provided more opportunity and jobs for people at all ranges in our state. We had college graduates too many leaving our state before I became governor, a very troubling sign because they couldn't find work in their own state. And they were leaving their families to go elsewhere. We fixed the economy, expanded the base, provided more in the way of investment that came in, entrepreneurs were more active, and the re result of that was there was more in the way of opportunity for people. And I look at unemployment today for college graduates. It's exceedingly high. And I say that's totally unacceptable for kids who have just spent a whole lot of money to get educated, and they're excited and energized about getting into the workplace. Today we just don't have enough opportunity. So simply put, you've got to have a president, like I did as governor. Don't listen to words. I mean, words only go so far. Look at what the candidate actually did uh, to create jobs and opportunity. That's the bottom line. Um, and so South Carolina cuts the, that higher ed funding every year, you know, raising tuition and fees for the students, you know, taking out the loans and all that. Um, how do you remedy that situation and take care of the public universities and their students while you know, minimizing the federal government's role in the education system? You've got to have a tax base that is larger and stronger, and a revenue flow into state government that is able to pro provide for more of the higher education needs. That's not happening today. So that, again, is part of what I did in my state. We were able to pro provide more in the way of opportunities, more programs within our higher education system, because we had revenue coming in that we didn't have before. And that's the only way to address the, uh, the shortfall that you're talking about. Gotcha, gotcha. And, um, you know, how does your uh, experience in China specifically, um, and you talk a lot about that, how does that specifically um, translate to South Carolina? How can, how can you use your experiences there and bring them here in South Carolina and, and you know, really help to stimulate job growth and all these other things you've been Living you've been in China, about? as has been the case living in Asia four times, it helps me to understand that our nation's future really isn't Afghanistan. We tend to spend a lot of bandwidth and a lot of resources in areas around the world that are legitimate uh, in many cases at first. But then you have to say we've achieved our objective, like in the case of Afghanistan, in the case of Iraq, and say longer term what really is important to the people of this country is to be able to compete in the 21st century. That's about the economy and that's about education. And if we lose sight of that focus, then you're going to have a rising China, a rising India, and others who are going to take away our opportunity. We have to stay ahead in the game. So having lived in China, having under, understanding the global marketplace as I do, gives me that sense of urgency about what we've got to get done in this country. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. A quick question um, regarding um, sort of staying competitive in, in the global marketplace. Um, how, how do we, you know, improve educational quality at the K through 12 level uh, in the country? I know you, you've spoken to uh, the need to reduce the influence of the Department of Education. Um, what about in a state like South Carolina where um, the the state's um, schools are, are sort of underperforming? The most powerful thing we can do, really two things. We can expand the marketplace of options for our young kids. The one-size-fits-all approach just isn't going to cut it because we have kids walking into the classroom with all different approaches to the classroom, different types of uh, learning styles, diff different attitudes and aptitudes. And a one-size-fits-all system doesn't, doesn't cover that. We've got to have more charter schools, for example. The second part of it, and I think the most powerful aspect, is we have to do more on the early childhood development side. I don't care what neighborhood you come from. I don't care what your point of origin is. If you're in a classroom, an, uh, an expanded kindergarten classroom that focuses on cognitive development, nailing the pillars of literacy around math and reading mm -hmm. by age six or seven, you will have given that child the greatest gift of all, which is literacy. And they'll go on and do a whole lot better in school. If you fail to lock in those areas of cognitive development by age six, sure. you're going to have a price to pay, uh, re remediation, and, a, and probably a less productive workforce. So I think focusing more on the early stages of uh, childhood development is a very, very powerful thing to do. And, and if you uh, sort of decrease the federal role in, in local public education, uh, how do you encourage states to institute those changes? I did it as governor. Uh -huh. I did all that. Sure. The, the federal government came in and said, here's no child left behind. Here are standards you've got to, we're setting for you, and if your schools don't you know, meet up to them, you'll be you know, a, a failing school, so-called. 
And I was the first governor to opt out of No Child Left Behind. It was nonsense. You know, the federal government coming in and saying, here's what you have to hit in terms of standard. All of our rural schools, at least some of them, became schools that were non-attainment schools. They didn't meet adequate yearly progress. Yet they were great schools. They just, they didn't fit the one-size-fits-all formula that the federal government put out. And as governor, I, all I wanted to do was say, Department of Education, just give us the tools we need to succeed. We know our schools. The teachers know our schools. The board members know schools. So do parents. We just need the tools to make them better. So in early childhood development stuff, we worked at the state level on that. Expanding opportunities for charter schools, we did all that locally. A Chinese uh, a language program that I instituted in the schools where kids could learn a, a language other than Spanish or French that was really 21st century relevant, we did at the state level. Uh, created a national model of excellence there. So all of that can be done at the state level and should be done at the state level. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yeah, yeah, Oh, oh, sure. oh, I said, who, who would do better than the one that knows your best, right?